A fine line separates the living from the dead, and it's a line few dare to cross intentionally. The thought of being buried alive is one of man's greatest nightmares. Premature burials are frequent plot lines in tall tales and horror stories. Yet prior to the advancement of modern medicine, the possibility of being buried alive was real. The 17th and 18th century, not unlike the Middle Ages, doctors were not able to assess what, what was a coma and what was dead. As a consequence of this, mistakes were made. People were buried alive. At the turn of the 20th century, the New York Times printed an article outlining five ways to make sure the dead were actually dead. The reality that you could be buried alive was so shocking to so many people that they actually made plans to protect themselves. One such plan led to the invention of the safety coffin in 1897. It was designed to detect even the slightest of movements. If a person was buried alive, a tube from above ground opened to supply air, while a flag and bell sought the attention of the cemetery watchman. But the fear of being buried alive was not universal. From the 10th through the 12th centuries, the ancient Toltec Empire was at its peak. Toltec culture actually embraced premature burial. For the Toltec, the awareness of death was a very key requirement to gain awareness of life. The Toltecs used death as a cornerstone of their philosophy and achieved this by honoring the earth, spending time immersed in the ground. This became known as the burial of the warrior. When you are digging your own grave, it's, it's very natural that you come into awareness of your own mortality. This is like having a talk to your own death. And by having this talk to your own death, you have a better sense of whether what you're doing in life really makes sense or you may consider some changes. The land of the Toltecs is now a sea of humanity known as Mexico City. One man wants to carry on the Toltec tradition, pushing the boundary of life into death. I will get buried alive. I will dig my grave. Then I will lay into this grave and they will cover it. This is the burial of the warrior. I think we are basically scared of mystery, of what we don't know. And death is something nobody knows about. Nobody came back and said, hey, it's like this. We do not know what is coming after. If there is coming nothing, or if you go into a heaven, or if you will get reborn, there are many, many theories about it. But nobody knows at all. I read once, death is what gives our lives a sense. High in the Ahusco Mountains, Elias will be supervised by two assistants acting as grave watchers, ushering him into the ground. My work is to assist, to take care, to, to be there in case of anything necessary to bring the person out next morning to open the grave. Mario Mayorga has been supervising burial of the warrior ceremonies since their resurgence in the 1980s. He's turning Toltec rituals into 21st century therapy for people seeking direction in life. Along 20 years, I have been helping people dig out the graves. It's, it's quite strange sensation from an outside viewer. For me, it's something really beautiful. As I understand it from the Toltecs, this makes life much more valuable, much more full. I've buried myself a lot since I began with this. I have done it around once every year. White clothing represents purity and rebirth for the body and soul that will be buried. The warrior allows himself to be guided to his gravesite by instinct. Somehow, eventually, he will find it through his feeling. Elias's marks in the ground guide the digging. 
He carves his tomb first by hand, a show of unity with Mother Earth. It's very powerful when you realize that you are a mortal. When people that come and do this realize that they are mortals and that the time that we have to live is, is counted. Every second that we spend will never return. Two hours into digging his own grave, Elias's hands can go no further. Tree branches and a white sheet cover the top, allowing just enough room for Elias to slip in once he is finished. When I dug my grave, I was trying to focus on this consciousness where I'm coming from, to get back to this origin and to, let's say, to get advices how to go on with this life better. In an hour, I will go down there and I will get buried alive. I am actually prepared to um, experience something unexpected. I'm prepared for mystery. Before Elias can enter the grave, one crucial step remains. And it may be the most disturbing. Elias writes his own epitaph. My epitaph will describe the person, the person I am and how this person was until now, and what is happening, and now I have changed. Soil dug by his own hands puts on the finishing touch. Elias is now buried alive in the tomb he himself created. A small air hole supplies him with his only chance of emerging the next morning. There comes to your mind this idea eventually, or it happens to me. What if I really die here? I already did my own grave. I'm already buried. Who guarantees my heart will keep on beating till tomorrow? We don't have guarantee the next minute of existence. fire, called Grandfather Fire, burns throughout the night. It's accompanied by the constant beat of a drum, representing the heartbeat of a mother's womb. Elias will spend 12 hours underground until the sun rises. The burial of the warrior has begun. This man that came in the grave, I'm never gonna see him again. If he comes out tomorrow, the person that will come out is going to be different. Somehow, something is going to happen. He's really passing this portal of death and rebirth. Twelve hours into his burial, Elias lays in the world of the dead. Only his resurrection remains. We are dying and being reborn all the time, permanently. It's very emotional and it's, it's very beautiful. That's the way that the new life begins. After half a day in an earthen grave, Elias emerges. I was scared of the tightness, and there can maybe be no air, and there's no room. I cannot do this, I cannot push this out of the way. It is not possible. But you understand totally clear that there is no need to do this. I feel connection with the earth and with, with the planet, and with people, and with everything. Seeing the light emerging from the grave, it was amazing. The experience of this is actually an peace. For example, I, I remember how in being into the grave, I get like in this, in this position of an embryo. And in this piece, there is no possibility to be angry or to be like confused or 
and do have resentment against anything. I feel in this I gain also a lot of trust. Of course, this I will take in, in my daily life, of course.